CES. You ever heard of it? Stands for Consumer Electronics Show 2020. Uh, I haven't been. I haven't. I wasn't there last year. I'm obviously not there this year. Uh, but before that, dude, I was, I'm telling you, I was up in it, as they say. Yeah, it's a good time. I was there, and so are you, Willie Do. It's a good time. We, uh, we went there. We saw it. We conquered it. We conquered CES many years ago. So now we, uh, we look from afar, as we do. It's a bit safer at a distance because, my goodness, Las Vegas. Is it, though? It's so fun. It's, it, it is a good, <laughs> it's a good time. Absolutely, it's a good time. People are out there. I'm sure they're having enough of a good time for all of us, those that are out there this year. But it doesn't change the fact that we get to see all the things that are happening. And in some ways, even sitting here, we can kind of – sometimes I would go there and be like, how did I miss that? What was I – is yeah. that the buffet or uh -huh. where was I? Definitely at the buffet. And and so sit, sitting here in the confines, as you could say, I feel like it's all flowing in and I'm, I'm poised and I'm ready to receive uh. and then transmit. Mm. And sort of, so, so that's, that's the mindset. Yeah, you see the whole landscape. So I'm still CES. I'm just CES here. Uh -huh. I'm CES here. Yeah. Stands for Consumer Electronics Show. To be honest, this is its very own Consumer Electronics Show. As far as I'm concerned, this right here is CES 2020 every day. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. That, at least that's what you tell me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. We got some news coming out of Las Vegas. Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite and Galaxy S10. Note. Not S10. This is versus. This is S10 Lite versus S10. Uh, but then we also got the Note a 10. Note 10 Lite. Lite. All kinds of light things. Now, the Note 10 Lite kind of makes a little bit more sense to me. Only because the Note is slightly more recent. Getting an S10 Lite with the S11 on the horizon or S20, whatever they're going to call it. Seems, it's a very, it's a very strange development. But it happened nonetheless. And I'm not going to... Look. I'm not going to get mad at Samsung for providing options to the people of planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do such a thing. I say, man, options are good, but you can't help but get a little bit confused about the whole landscape. They didn't give us a price on these things as far as what I can read. I can barely read, so maybe I missed it. Mm. But I didn't see a price. I didn't see a price for this thing. So that's kind of... Uh, it leaves a lot of a lot open to speculation about where this slots in and how it interfaces with the rest of the lineup. And the reason I say that is because we have S11. We first of all, with S10, we had the E, e version. Mm -hmm. And it came out at the time of the S10. And that was the budget model. So that gives you for the S10 lineup, S10, S10 Plus, S10 E, S10 Lite 4. S11 on the horizon just right off the back of the light version of the previous model. When do you buy a phone? I, yeah. When do I buy my new S? At what time do I, how do I figure out mm. when and where to act? I don't know. Now, granted, if they align things properly, maybe the light version is always sort of the previous, but it's not even the previous version light. It's actually a totally different phone. If you look at the front camera layout moved, the front display change is not curved, it's flat. The camera layout, completely different. The camera layout looking more like the rumored S11 camera layout. So what, what exactly makes it an S10? Why does it have to be called an S10 at all? Well, I, I, I guess that's another area we can speculate. Maybe... Maybe Samsung, if they're gonna, maybe they're not gonna bring a budget version of the S11. And then, therefore, the way to differentiate the budget model from the flagship model is that it's always going to have the previous designation alongside the light logo. I have to say, as, as, as much as I'm going on and on about the naming and, and so on, the phone itself looks pretty uh, interesting. If the price is right, of course, price is gonna be a key consideration. It's got a huge battery in it, 4,500 milliamp hours. 
The screen's a little bit lower resolution, but that's going to be enough for most people, 1080p type of setup. Again, if the price lines up. Snapdragon 855. What, what are you doing here? You got a macro lens built right onto it? What are we doing here? I don't need to have the curved display. Flat display is fine with me. The Note model actually gets a headphone jack. It keeps a headphone jack on there. So it's interesting on its own, but it lives in a universe where it's a little bit difficult to figure out which galaxy is right for you. In a universe where it's hard to figure out which galaxy is right for you. Kirk almost missed it, but now he's on the same page. You know, I was watching some of that Guardians of the Galaxy type of thing. Not, not actually that. I was actually watching. It was a Marvel movie. Which one? It was uh, the latest one. It's spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Uh, <coughs> the, late, the, the most recent Avengers movie. Spoiler Endgame? alert. And yeah, I was watching Endgame. Yeah. I can't go into that on this show here. But I was watching Endgame, so there's Guardians things going on, and I was, you know. Yeah. I just the, the universe, universal component, there's, they're in space. Space is happy. There's space. Yes. So They go to many different galaxies. Spoiler alert, there's space in yes. the movie. So. so Galaxy is, look, they could line up. Guardians of the Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy collab, you put the X in the middle. There you go. And it's a special unboxing experience. It's twice the price. And everyone's happy. Yeah. And it's hand delivered by uh Chris Pratt? No. Uh, Ra Rocket Raccoon? No. No, 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 no. The guy who's out of shape in the movie. But now he's in Australia fighting the fires and whatnot. The Australian guy. Wait, is he Australian? Hemsworth. I don't know if he's Australian, but he's over there dealing with the fires right now. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's Thor. I, uh, yeah. Uh, well, shout out to everybody in Australia who's yeah. uh, struggling. I mean, it's hard at a distance to really grasp the magnitude of it. And New Zealand, too. But, man, from what I can tell, that's a, that's a major one going on over there. Uh -huh. So, shout out to everybody working on that, helping out, and whatnot, including Hemsworth. I think he gave him a million bucks. I think Thor gave him a million bucks. Good. As you would if you were Thor. Yeah. In the absence of the hammer mm -hmm. and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping out. Galaxy phones. Uh, I'm happy about these light ones. I can accept these light ones. I don't mind these light ones. I'm not going to get mad about these light ones. Mm. You come with the price. You come with the, the spec. 4,500 milliamp hour. Give me the camera performance I come to expect from the S lineup. What do I care if it's got a 10 or 11? I don't care. I mean, the 11 is probably going to be pretty enticing, but I think this could attract a lot of people with the right price if they can get past to the bizarre naming situation, trying to figure out which is which. They could have a lot of fun with this one. And then you got the Note series as well. Note series. I mean, they look almost identical, even though one is a Note. The camera cutout's a little bit different. You lose the macro lens on the Note series. Of course, you get the S Pen back. Uh, strange devices, but so be it. 2020, smartphones, choices. Does this, let me ask you something, Will. Does this some, take some heat off of the Samsung event, or does it add some heat to the Samsung event? The next unpacked event. Uh, unpacked. Happening February. Um, I think it kind of takes a little bit of heat off eh? really yeah takes a little juice out of it there's too many phones that right you're hitting out. the fatigue level on that yeah that, okay. are, that are almost flagship so what did the they light. do then should they have waited to the unpacked event and then had these alongside yeah just at the very the, end of the event same with the s10e yeah. but you know they want to do something in vegas they're in vegas they can't just be at the buffets like us well they showed off a, a round ball they got, look man they got the stage they got a whole they book a whole floor in a hotel for all the people they bring they can't be at the buffets like us. Yeah, they're very prepared. They got to do something on there out there. Yeah. So that's what that's about. So anyway, I'm not, I think they'll be just fine. I think Samsung's going to be all right. Okay. And uh, who knows, in your future, Will, it might be an S10 Lite. Yeah. I'm down. just saying who knows. Yeah, I'm down. It just might be. Uh, Sony, on the other hand, they're like, 
ain't no, this ain't, never mind light. We're going heavy. Yeah. Let's just make something heavy. Crazy. Heavy. You know? They got a car. They're, <laughs> yeah. Sony, we got a car. I love Sony. I just, for me, it's a nostalgia. It's a youngster. I'm a youngster when I think about Sony. I, I de-age 20 years. I think about Sony. Really? Yes. Don't make me go into it, Will. I've done it too many times on this show. Don't make me say it. Don't make me say the T word. Trinitron. How dare you make me say it. Is that... That got me, that got me in the game, man. Back is that then, your favorite, though? Sony product? No, it was probably... I would have... I mean, in that era, it was like a Walkman or something, but the Trinitron, because it had direct competitors, Panasonic wasn't really heavy in the personal cassette player space at the time until they came out with the shock stuff and the sports stuff and then the discmans that wouldn't skip shockwave got to you had to have that but before that you went over to somebody's house for the record i didn't even have the trinitron i had a toshiba because we wanted to value point right trying to save a few bucks i explained this to you too many times in the show i know I had the toshiba the value point but you go over to a person's house, they have the Trinitron, and the marketing would be talking about color. Be saying, it's got that, it's got those skin tones, it's got the right color on the tube. Mm -hmm. You see that? So you knew the person was a discerning viewer because they, they spent a few extra on the Trinitron of the time. Mm. So, but then you had the PlayStation, iconic, never mind the Walkman, which I mentioned. And I'll go a step further, Will. I'll kill you on this one. Mini disc. I had a mini disc, mm. dude. Come on, give me some vibes right now. Bring it up on the screen. Not any disc. How dare you? That's the one. Mini disc. I'll show you which one I had, okay? Just real quick. Right over there. MZ. No, mine was better. Scroll down a little bit. Mine was the premium model of that. No, maybe it was that one with the screen on it. Scroll a little bit. Give me one more scroll real quick. Yes, it was it was that one. Give me that MZR seven hundred on the left. Give me that real quick. Look at this. I had that. That's my mini disc player. I was recording. I was rewriting. It was it was. Remember the Matrix? Uh -huh. Neo. This can't be everything. What am I? He's at the computer. He falls. You know. Yeah. And then the, the people come to pick up the discs at his door. It's like some cool yeah. uh, cyberpunk looking folks yeah. at the door. And he's, he's got things that look like mini discs, I believe, that they exchange. In the, in the book. Yes. With the pages all. I don't out. know what. The, yeah. This can't be every. This isn't real. <laughs> Did he say that? No, I don't know. And from and I remember just thinking the mini disc player was very sci-fi when I looked at those little discs in the plastic case. It just re felt yeah. really sci-fi. Really cool. Because before it had the casing on it, it was always don't scratch the disc. Do you remember that situation? Don't scratch the disc. Anyway, Sony, you see how it's all wrapped up for me. The positive vibes. Then you bring forth the Vision S sedan, which I gotta say. First crack at it? First swing at it? Come on now, Will. Tell me what you got. What do you think of this vehicle? The look, the the the, the feeling you're getting? I would drive it. Is that right? Yes. You would place your hands on that steering wheel? <laughs> I would. What else would you do in there, Will? <laughs> you don't want to know. Well, you just, you'd push the pedal, of course you would. It's a four-seater. The back seats look incredible. The back seats look as good as the front seats, I'll it's, tell you. Entire glass on the top. Some people initially said it kind of had some Taycan vibes. But a little bit, yeah. There's a little bit of it. Less so on the rear end, more sort of on the front side. The interesting he thing here is this is a collaboration project, this vehicle, this concept. It's a concept, but it looks like a... It, it looks a lot closer to a finished product than what you would typically see at CES in the form of concept cars. And part of that, I think, is because it was a partnership between various industry leaders, including 
Bosch, Continental, Genetics, NVIDIA, Magna. Now, Magna, Magna is around the corner over here. They, they have been making parts and platforms for the automotive industry for a really long time. Big player, big timers. And the thinking here is they could build a platform around this that then other technology companies could plug into. So here's what I mean to say. Think of the car as a platform. Well, like an Android, like an OS. And then Sony comes along and says, we want to do our take on top of the platform. So you have the, char you have the batteries, the charging infrastructure, the, those mechanical pieces. But then we sort of optimize the inside experience, the electronic components, the mm. technology, the software. Things like this. Because increasingly, these are becoming technology products. I mean, we're talking about consumer electronics show. And we're talking a lot about cars now. Of course, Tesla started the whole thing. See how the rear seats are comfy, too? Mm -hmm. You could be back there, Will. Yeah. Watching the screen there? It would be pretty comfortable. Okay, coming via TechCrunch, the car is a bit surprising, but fits with Sony's current strategy. Over the last generation, Sony started building and selling key technologies as a supplier. Sony camera sensors are found in many leading smartphones, including the iPhone Pro. 11 Pro, they mean to say. So it's kind of like Sony's becoming comfortable with the idea of interfacing with other brands and companies in the technological space here. Mm -hmm. That they're okay if... Hey, we're teaming up with NVIDIA or Magna or whoever. Right. That's fine. And we can do better, bigger things together than independently. And that becomes interesting. So I think most people, this was kind of the story the first day of CES. This was the one I was seeing mostly on social media. <clears throat> Two reasons. Obviously, Sony never put their, their name, never put a badge on a thing that moves. I guess that's not true. The Ibo moves. The dog. Yeah. That moves. You don't drive it. No. Drives itself. They never put their name on a car before, so that was a bit of a shock to the system. And then second, I think people genuinely like the car, which is tough because you know how this goes. You, 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 you go in there, you draw some lines, and people love it or they hate it. Often when people see a, a new form... There's a little regurgitation. Yeah. This is not that. I mean, granted, it's it kind of it obviously takes inspiration from stuff that people mm -hmm. like. They played a little safe on this one. They played which it is, safe, which is a good move. They played it safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I think it, it it's a nice mix of the future and the present and everything else. So, congrats to Sony. That's cool. What a fun project. If I was, if you if if you were a guy like you, you were working at Sony and say, well, we want to put you on the we're gonna do a car for CES. We want to put you on it. Yeah. That's fun. It's a great reveal, too. It just exciting. came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. Surprised everyone. You, you get to walk out there. The, all the, the, the oohs and the ahs. Yeah. Ooh. Sony. And then Willie Do standing there. He's in. Yeah, that's me. I've been working. <laughs> that's the car. I've been yeah. working. Yeah. I've been working. Yeah. Drew a couple of lines. Alienware is making a Nintendo Switch, a PC version of a Nintendo Switch. It's obviously not a Nintendo Switch. It's a PC gaming thing. Uh, this has kind of been a CES thing for a while now. As far as I've been going, it's either Razer. It's usually Razer. Project something. It would be Razer, Project something. And then you go to the hotel room, and, and, the, and the nerds would be sitting around, yourself included, and he'd be saying, did you see Razor Project Gotham? Razor Project Synthesis? <laughs> and he'd be like, no, I didn't, I didn't go there. You got to go to the Razor booth. Yeah. You got to go to the Razor booth. Check it out tomorrow. See? Yeah, and then you would go, breakfast. and it would be some contraption. I don't remember which project I'm thinking of right now. Vivian, Diana. Uh, so I would say, you know what I mean? It was one of those. I don't know. It was one of those projects. Uh, and uh, and it was, it's always something like this, some modular future of gaming. This is how it's going to be. Uh -huh. And it's PC gaming attempting to hold on to the being the go-to platform and, and pretending 
at least for the time being, that it can also be truly mobile. Obviously, the Switch begs to differ. Nintendo begs to differ. Although this thing looks pretty cool and good, and it looks surprisingly like a finished product. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a Switch because they put angles on it. Do you uh, see the angles on the... So yeah. that's not a Switch because they put the angles. Yeah, that's but how you know. it works the same way with a controller that splits apart or can work independently with the screen propped up or the handles can go on either side of the screen and then you have your typical thumbsticks, buttons, and all the fun stuff that comes alongside with alongside a controller. Uh, they don't, there's not too many details about what's actually in there. I have to say, I've talked about on this show before, with the Zelda on the Switch, I was having a time. Yeah, like on, on your bed, on the no, couch. No, no bed. Couch. With oh. the volume and the ambience. Toilet? No. <laughs> How dare you? No, I actually, to be, to be honest, I had the Switch oh. almost exclusively docked in the dock. Uh. So I could play on the TV, uh -huh. which didn't take advantage of the switchiness at all. No. Because where am I? What am I doing? Where am I? I'm not on the... Where am I playing the switchy version of the Switch? See you later, guys. I'm I'm going to go to the park and... Some people do. I know they do. Yeah. Maybe I'm just jealous of them. Maybe that's all it is. Yeah. But that's just not... Uh, that's not the way it worked out for me. <laughs> maybe one day i don't know i could be an old man yeah on the park bench feeding pigeons i'll probably just be playing chess on or switch. something though yeah. to be quite fair yeah do you, you can see i'm pointing the chess is over there do you play chess yeah of course okay do you uh, not really. No. Play a little chess here and there. I should, yeah. Yeah, it's good, man. Uh, but anyway, it's just an old classic game for those of you that never heard of it. <laughs> it's what the old men do, like me and Will. It's what <laughs> a couple of senior citizens do. Yeah. We, uh, gather around the chessboard. Mm -hmm. This is not a chessboard. This is an Alienware. Project Diana. It's called UFO, actually. Which is cooler than... I'm glad they didn't put Project in the name. It actually makes it seem more like a, an actual possibility when you don't put project in the name, then mm -hmm. maybe it's not solely a concept device. I think it's kind of cool. Look, to be fair, as much as I'm goofing because I'm having fun, God forbid you have a little fun in your day, the components necessary to get a decent gaming experience, they've been shrinking, obviously. And so devices like this are probably becoming more feasible and it could be a good place for PC gaming to go because, well, how many people have space for the whole setup? How many people have space and time for the whole setup? Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't. And maybe this is what PC gaming uh -huh. needs. I don't know. You load up. What do you do? You load up Steam on there? Is that what you do? Yeah. You load it up. Kick back. It's bigger than a, the screen is bigger than a phone. So... And you have tactile controls, and uh -huh. pro hopefully the horsepower is better than a phone. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too loud with the fans and whatnot. But, and you can see there they have it connected to a computer uh, display, a monitor. Maybe PC gamers are sitting there thinking, why are these Switch guys having a fun on the couch? Because yeah. I got to sit on a couch every so often. I'm hunched over. Mm -hmm. He just adjusted his back when I said hunch because he knows. Yeah. Everybody, I almost did too. Everybody feels the hunch in 2020. Uh huh. You just say hunch, and then everyone's just like... Everybody feels the hunch in 2020. You know, you're supposed to give it a stretch when you wake up in the morning. Yeah. You stretching, Will? I do yoga. Oh, jeez, man. Yeah. Why you got to <laughs> upstage me like that? <laughs> you're probably on a park bench I, after that with a Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Yeah. How dare you? Just all crunched up. Yeah, so it's still a, it's still a concept. How do, you make, how do you put a competitive price on this? Uh, you can get the Switch Lite for two bills. Mm. The real Switch for three. What do you, what, what's the most you can sell this for? $4.99? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, $4.99. Because otherwise people are start talking about laptops and stuff. You heard about this thing. Uh, Ricky Gervais goes up and it's just... 
he's just going after it. He's mm -hmm. just going after everyone, and it's a video clip. And it, people were passing this video clip to me. Yeah. Everybody was sending this video clip to me. I didn't, and it didn't really venture into the tech segment until Tim Cook gets yes. gets gets his moment of uh, airtime at the Golden Globes. And, and Ricky Gervais been doing this thing now for. Uh, he referenced it in the in the in the in the intro there. He referenced the fact that it was his fifth time, I believe, fourth or fifth, fifth. So he's been doing it forever, and obviously, he is having fun with it. <laughs> he's obviously having fun with it. Now I don't know how much of it is. I don't care. It's my last time. I'm a gangster, or how much of it is. Based in truth? No, no, no. How much of it is having fun? Uh. What I mean to say by this is we're, we get to watch it at a distance. Go, oh, my. Oh. But if that's your craft, that you're a comedian. Go at it. Maybe, go that's, it. What you, maybe that's what you're built yeah. for. Maybe it's not so just because everyone in the crowd is. <gasps> maybe for him, he's just. Yeah. He's just bobbing and weaving mm -hmm. just another day i mean it's obviously a bigger audience than if he's just shooting shooting it with the pals yeah. over at the local watering hole mm -hmm. but and he keeps coming back and doing this so, exactly I mean, that's what working. i'm saying so is it's he working. playing up the fact that to this year i'm going to say <laughs> the thing that's going to get me kicked off and then they keep asking him to come back because everyone pays attention to the mm -hmm. golden globes because i'll tell you what i won't be talking about no globes right now yeah we're talking myself about, so Myself, mm -hmm. these globes, I would not be watching these globes if Ricky didn't force me to watch the globes because everybody passed me the clip. Yeah. So the globes win. The Golden Globes, the uh, Hollywood Associated Press, they got my eyeballs because he went out and, and, and said the things at the expense of the audience. But that's how these things work. Uh, for those that didn't see the clip, the key part for tech enthusiast is when he goes after Tim Cook, he accuses Tim Cook and Apple of running sweatshops in China. And the reason that he's going after them, the motivation to go after them is because they're now in the media business with Apple TV Plus. And the morning show had nomination for something. Best show, I don't know, best actress. It had, uh, you had Witherspoon. Yep. You had, you had Rachel. What's her name? You had Rachel. Jennifer Aniston. You had Aniston. Yeah. You had Aniston and Witherspoon. Yeah. You got yourself a hit Steve right Carell. there. Steve Carell. You got yourself a hit right there, sir. You think this is news right here? Nah. If you had Aniston and Witherspoon, now you got a show. Yeah. This is not a show. This right here is straight garbage. <laughs> and Tim Cook knows it. Yeah. He's making that face right now. If he was forced to watch this. That's his face. He's laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, is he ever. Man, I saw his earnings from last year. I feel like I saw his earnings. I'm pretty sure he just... He is a bank. Yeah. He's, he doesn't have to laugh to the bank because he is the bank. He just has to laugh to himself. He's a walking bank. He's a bank. Anyway, so Ricky's got to go after him, and this is sort of my take on it. Just a quick... It's just a quick take on it. This is how it goes, Will. If you once you put yourself in the media landscape, you're a part of the thing now. You want to go and put your suit on and sit there with them, mm. which is what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if he wanted to do it. They told him to do it. You know how this goes with the advisors and whatnot. Come on, Tim. It'll be fun. <laughs> you're fired after that one. Make me sit through that. Yeah. Although I noticed the camera cut away from him quick. They didn't hold it. In the clip that I saw. After the, the joke was sent, it was a quick second on Cook, and then it was like, whoops, we're out. Can't be doing that. Cook will never come back. You know what type of money Cook is spending on this thing with the Anistons and the Witherspoons? He's putting money into Hollywood that wasn't already there. That's how that Apple TV Plus thing works. This is fresh money. Amazon, Netflix, Apple. And that's sort of what Ricky was saying. He's, Ricky's saying, don't tell me I can't come at you. You want to sit over here with the bow tie, it's fair game. You're in, this, you're in my world now. Mm. 
this is my biz. And Tim is not used to it, rightfully so. He's used to going to the keynote with the big projector and the sneakers. Yeah. And the... <laughs> Who wouldn't want that? Yeah. I want that. Mm -hmm. You want that. That's fine. We can do that. You know your expectations are set. But you show up with the bow tie. And you think you're having a night out. Oh, you might have had a glass of champagne. Uh huh. And then you got to deal with Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Someone's getting fired. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. See what I'm saying? I don't know if we ever see Tim again. I think he should come back next year. It's all fun and games. It's all part of it. Uh, he pulled no punches. Ricky went after it. And that's the game. That's entertainment. That's what, that's what you're in. That's how it works. People understand the rules. Make the exchange. It's a give and take. You want to go get a little... You got to give a little. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't be rigid about it. You can't get upset about it. You, it just it just is what it is. But for everyone else saying, ah, uh, truth bomb, reality dose, Hollywood elite. It's like, what does, does this really change anything? No. It's a fun night for you. It's a fun seven minute clip as you go back to the, the Cheetos uh -huh. and the Netflix. Uh -huh. So, you know. We don't have to, it doesn't have to be a whole truth bomb. It could be, that's funny. Those are interesting observations. Well done. Good job, Ricky. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do, boycott Hollywood? What are you going to do, boycott Apple? You're lying to yourself. Maybe you will. I don't know. Hey, whatever. Hey, whatever. Whatever makes you tick and run and click. Yeah, there's too many views at this point. Too many what? Too many views. Points of view? No, just views. Like uh, number of views? Yeah, number of views. Like this is all ready to go. Like for Gervais to do his thing every single year, it's uh, always going to get. Ah, the eyeballs are ready to be. Uh, yeah. To be shocked and appalled, and and to be. They're ready for the truth bombs. Yeah. People love that stuff, don't mm -hmm. they? Finally, people, you get a dose of their own medicine. Finally, you did rich people. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all sit around. Get him, Ricky. Ricky's balling out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky's balling out of control. Yeah. He plugged his Netflix show mm -hmm. in the thing. No, no, and, and, I, and it's no hate from me. I'm just saying, let's call it what it is. It's all entertainment for yeah, us at the end of the day. For sure. They're all putting on the show for us at the end of the day. If they have the, our eyeballs, it's a win. Yes. They done did the thing. Even at the expense, if you had to be semi-embarrassed for a minute. Mm -hmm. You still, now, pe now we talk, now we just said morning show. Yeah. Now we just said Timmy. Now we just talked about his sneakers again. Imagine like Ricky Gervais just like presenting the whole thing, like no candid, like no truth, just like a boring. Nobody's speech. watching it. Yeah, we wouldn't be talking. It doesn't about matter it. what they're pitching us, whatever show they're pitching us after, because they don't even have our attention in the first place. Yeah. So pretend, pretend that we all hate each other, or pretend that it's 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 strictly tumultuous and and outrageous, and we gotta come, and then all of a sudden. I'm watching the morning show, mm -hmm. which didn't happen, but at least we got this far. Now maybe one person is going to go watch the morning show because of Ricky Gervais. And yeah. it's true. That's how it works, man. Yep. Sometimes the outrageous piece, like the outrage, that becomes the vehicle in an unintended fashion. You thought, yeah. you know what I mean? You started pushing the agenda that you disagree with unintentionally by hopping on the bandwagon and publicizing the thing. Cause like what, tell me what's gonna, ha what's gonna change for Tom Hanks? It, does Tom Hanks tomorrow look different than Tom Hanks yesterday? Because of uh, Gervais' statement? Yeah, does no. it? No, no, Tom Hanks just keeps on Tom Hanks. He just keeps winning. Yeah, he's just still <laughs> Tom Hanks, you know? And they still, you still got the dudes that don't can't even age, like Brad Pitt or the other guy Rudd. They show oh, him. Rudd. Pharrell doesn't age. For, you see what I'm oh, saying? Man, you still got. They're still on those programs. Yeah, it's still it's still happening. I mean, even Hanks is looking all right. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Anyway, 
Uh, speaking of Apple and Tim, on to more real stuff as opposed to just to squirming in public. Who knows if he was even squirming? Maybe he loved it. And he's like, man, I got a shout out from Ricky for the sweatshops. <laughs> yeah, he might be into it. it, it in other sure. words, it's kind of, it's like you made it. Yeah. In, in, in other words, now that you're in the same reference point, even to be made fun of is to be noticed. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, more serious tech news. Foxconn cancels plans for $5 billion investment in India. We talked about this a number of times, how uh, the incentives, the incentive structure that Indian government was putting in place to attract more manufacturing from, well, from the West, the East, from mostly the East, obviously, particularly in the realm of smartphones, incentivizing the idea of assembling or at least doing a portion of assembly of smartphones in India for the domestic market first and then maybe eventually export. Foxconn, tremendous player in the game, as we're well aware of at this point. They were going to be one of the big investors in India, go in there and, and really move things around, especially after the trade situation between China and the U.S., the political situation there, it kind of accelerated the process of companies diversifying their manufacturing procedures to, to at least hedge themselves against the impending tax uh, tariff mm -hmm. war that was going on and then it was put on pause and then a bunch of other stuff happened. I, Trump's, Trump is busy with some other things now. Yeah. Which is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. But apparently it's not going completely smoothly because Foxconn is a bit upset with India. At least they're upset with this particular deal that didn't go their way. They were trying to buy 44 acres in a manufacturing hub at a place called J Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust in Navi, Mumbai. You didn't think I was going to get through that. Did pretty good. All right, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. See, they were they were trying to buy forty four acres in a special economic zone. I, I assume that also comes alongside some extra incentives to set up shop there. But the land that they wanted didn't go to them. Instead, it went to a global terminal operator, DP World. And they said, all right, fine, we're out. We'll take our five billies. And we'll go to, I don't know where you go, Brazil. I don't know where you go. Wisconsin. <laughs> I heard they try to do something in Wisconsin. It's not going so well. Maybe you can do that. But either way, they're pulling out with this particular project, pulling out from India. What will the effect or impact of this be? Well, Foxconn responsible for Apple stuff. Usually, mostly in a big way, they're doing the iPhones. So what it could mean is maybe not seeing the price reduction, at least domestically in India, that you had expected or hoped for. Or on the flip side, what it could mean is that that acceleration towards potentially exporting those goods, that might not happen as rapidly either. Because this $5 billion being pumped into that economy, into that zone, and in this particular space, you would assume would be would make a dent. Mm -hmm. But who knows? It's a massive industry. Is $5 billion even $5 billion when you're talking smartphones? When you're talking Foxconn, what's $5 billion? Chump change. $5 billion is a, it's a light snack. Yeah. It's a, it's a onigri. Just one. Yo, I saw on Dancing Bacons, I saw <coughs> Onigri with no filling. It's yeah, like, it's kind of weird, eh? That's just like a, what is that? That's just a ball of rice. It's a bit <laughs> yeah. rude. Without any nori or anything. It's yeah, weird. so I don't know, because you were talking the whole thing up, so I was interested, and I was like, yeah. oh, they also exist just completely plain rice. I think it's flavored rice. It is. It's like yeah. fried rice. Yeah, yeah, with soy sauce. But I don't know. Yeah. The, you made it sound really interesting. When you went on the whole... Well, you, for the most part, there is stuffing. When you went on the whole ranting and raving on the previous episode... Which I do, yeah. You just lost it, and I was hiding under the desk. And Elon Musk, this is the other story. That kept get, I kept getting hit with this one, He uh, with the dance moves. He went to China to sort of celebrate some vehicles rolling off the assembly line there in Shanghai. They're... they're uh, delivering cars now 
manufactured, assembled in China for the Chinese market. It's a big move, man, for Tesla. Tesla's stock has been has been up. Things are there's some optimism going on, which doesn't exist everywhere in the tech segment. And here he is cracking into a market that's tough to crack into. And it appears he's being received well because he's having a time. And you play the clip here and you see the dance moves. And he's having, look at this. He's on stage, put it in, not full, put it in the semi-translucent situation. Where did you go? <laughs> Kirk, is this your first day on the ones and twos? You can't remember. Yeah, it's something <laughs> like that. That's definitely not what we had in mind, Kirk. Kirk's having too much fun today. I think Kirk had too, too many onigris today. Anyway, so yeah, people are saying he's got bizarre dance moves, which I suppose is true. But it's also just an awkward situation in general. You're on stage, you're doing a presentation, and the music is playing, and everyone starts cheering when you throw a, f a few moves out. You can't end it. That's the, one, that's the one that always gets me. He's doing like that uh, weird the, sphinx pose or something. The, the, Egyptian, the Egyptian, walk Egyptian, like an yeah. Egyptian, yeah, there. And then he's like, I don't know. <laughs> but this is what happens, Will. You throw out a, a slight little dance move, and you can't end it. That's what happened here. Yeah, that's you get true. on stage and you throw it a little, and then they're like, ah. Yeah, everyone's. Just and now you're on. done. You can't end it, or else you're a jerk. And now I'm I'm stripping. That's what he's doing. And you run out of moves quick. Any one of us, this would happen. There's always the jacket move, which you can throw the jacket. And he did it in a classy way. It wasn't in like a strip kind of way. He did it in a classy way. I don't way. know. <laughs> it was like a weird but you just run out of moves. And he had the Egyptian move in the tank, and then he had a couple like side to sides. And it's just, it's over. And you say, hey, man, I tried. And then hopefully people, I was saying to you earlier, though, it goes to show you how the feeling around Elon is so different from guys like Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg does this and everyone's saying cyborg, Facebook, evil. He's uh, trying to be human. Uh, regu government regulation. Yeah. The, the, he, Zuckerberg could do those dance moves and they'd be screaming government regulation. <laughs> Someone needs to regulate that. But Elon does it and he posts it on his Twitter, which is another good move. If it's an awkward endeavor and the cameras are out, you go on Twitter, you get ahead of it. And he says, at Tesla Giga Shanghai NSFW. And he posts on his own Twitter with his dance move. And that's what you do if you're Elon. You embrace it. And so shout out to Elon for the right play on that. And... Yes, it's awkward. It would be for most of us. It's a weird scenario to be in. Most people never find themselves there. Let's let's play it a different way. What if all of a sudden he's got some prepared dance moves, jabberwockies, and he's flying and everything is choreographed? You'd be, I don't mind watching that. No, but you would be wondering why is that? Why is Elon doing that? It almost doesn't fit the the character. Right. He is very. Meme, meme that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is it's kind of, it's the fact that it is uncomfortable that makes him endearing. Right. If he just did it really well, you might be like, all right, he can dance. Is he, was he, how long was he preparing to show that off? How, how, how much practice did he put into that? I thought he was going to Mars, but yeah. meanwhile, he's taking he's break dancing his, courses. Yeah, he's wasting his time on. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of, it's almost, it's easier to embrace for people because it is, the awkwardness is relatable to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Maybe this starts a trend. Maybe it's dance moves on stage now. The dude from Microsoft used to do it. Balmer. Balmer. Screaming. He's still on the sidelines at the Clippers games. He's screaming and yelling. Yeah. But he took Kawhi, so we can't talk about him anymore. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's fine. It's no problem. And call him out. I promise it's no problem. Well, I mean, as of right now, they got to get through the Lakers. So, yeah. The 27 inch touchscreen micro microwave with Netflix is peak CES. That will is a 27 inch touchscreen microwave that you're looking at. And the entire front panel of the microwave is a screen. That's what 27 inches looks like. 
Uh, Kirk's a big fan of this. He said earlier, this is what he needs in the kitchen. It's not all fun and games. It's not just, it's not about just watching Netflix in the kitchen. No one, I mean, who needs to do that? It's actually kind of like that other oven, the June oven. Yes. You remember that? We're going to do a video on that. We I want to cook a few things in that. They were kind of the first to do something like this. But this is, I guess, the next generation or a more advanced version, which adds a screen. They claim, GE, who's responsible for it, that U.S. families waste $800 a year throwing out food, or they screw it up. Uh, it's waste because you screw up the cooking. Right. I don't know what you do. I guess you burn it, or I don't know what you do. I'm guessing this uses AI to kind of there you go. cook it. You can just throw AI on anything. You can sprinkle AI on anything. Yeah. It fixes anything. And then it's the best. You got a plumbing issue? Salmon. You just sprinkle AI. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a camera in there, smart camera. It takes pictures of the meals, like as it's cooking. It's able to monitor the meal, know when it's fully done. It's like the June oven by the looks of it. Uh, it has thousands of recipes through Side Chef. Live video chat functionality with multiple camera angles. It sits above your range and even has an overhead cooktop facing camera for taking pictures of your meals. From the oven to Instagram. <laughs> oh. Kirk needs that one for sure. Obviously straight into Instagram. But yeah, it is peak CES. This is the type of thing, surprisingly, this is the type of thing you find yourself talking about when you go to CES. It's never, oh, did you... I mean, to a certain extent, did you see the crazy installation or big TV? But then it's always, did you see the wacky gadgets or did you see the obscure ones? And that's a, a huge uh, door. What's that? That's a huge door. <laughs> it's a huge door. It's a huge door. It's a thousand watt microwave, though. Uh -huh. It's a pretty substantial microwave. But yeah, you end up talking about some of these weird gadgets that may or may not see the light of day. We'll see if this one does. But that's kind of cool. Look, it's looking at the pot. Hmm. Does that help, though? I don't know. I guess you could all you could immediately shoot one of those overhead cooking videos. Oh, and right, then you yeah. could remember the ingredients you used and the sequence you took. Remember you were making the chicken noodle soup the other day? Yeah. You could have had a video recording of all the steps into the pot and the amount of time. And if you felt like you nailed it, you could do it exactly the same next right. time around. Yeah, an overhead shot would be useful. Okay, so anyway, it's a 27-inch touchscreen microwave, which most people probably won't use properly, and they'll just load Netflix up and find another place to become a vegetable themselves instead of cooking vegetables themselves. Mm. Is sparkling water bad for you? Will, stop reading. Tell me right now. You know I, ju you know I love the sparkling. Yeah. Plus, I can't get away from all the advertising. It's the the with the soda stream. What's your go-to, Perrier? I've been drinking one recently called Montelier, which okay. is like a Perrier substitute. I think it's from Quebec. It's a blue can, and it's a little bigger than the Perrier can. Mm. But yeah, Perrier is great. Uh, San Pellegrino. I don't. I'm not that specific when it comes to Lacroix. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I had to add that last one in. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> uh, let me think of some other ones. I'll even do a club soda. Yeah. A club sodas. <laughs> no, I don't have a soda stream because I hate the advertising. Yeah. So I've been trying to save the universe in a minute. Get a soda stream. That gets saved the world. Basically, if I get a soda stream, I've saved the world. Aren't, aren't there I'm Thor. Alternatives? If I get a soda stream, I'm Thor. You saved the world on my behalf. So the world is now saved. Yes. You saved enough carbon for the both of us. Lovely. That worked out amazing. No, I don't know what it is. It's just... Uh, I, I, the bubbles. I like a bubble. You like a bite. I like a, a bite. bite to your I drink. like a bite. And I'm not drinking Coca-Cola. Um... It's a refreshing thing. You know I like to drink beer, Well, I like to drink beer. 
and a, and a, and a sparkling water gives you a bit of a beer bite. At the end of it, that kind of uh-huh. kind of crunch to it. It's got texture. It's got mm-hmm. a crunch to it. All right. Yeah. I just had to clear that up. I mean, yeah, I I totally. Understand. So you 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 do it. You think it's a freebie. You think I got the sparkling water? It's just water. But it ain't no freebie because the universe don't give no freebies, ladies and gentlemen. You don't yeah. get to enjoy anything without <laughs> paying for it. It's a give and take. It's a give and take. Even for water. The yin and yang. You don't get somebody trying to give you something without any side effect. Tell him to get it, tell him to get as far away from you as possible. Yeah. Just run away. That's a that's a that's a lie right there. Yeah. Because there's always something you gotta give to get. Give something up, get something. Well, it turns out it's the same. Maybe water is is not. Maybe water is the one thing that you just get. The universe has it, it's a wonderful thing. I'm not talking about sparkling, I'm talking about plain, plain water. Mm-hmm. But Sparkling water apparently ruins your teeth. What? Uh, sparkling water is made by infusing water with carbon dioxide, obviously, and that produces carbonic acid. It has a weak acidic pH, but it's still there. Uh, and that chemical reaction, well, that's what you like, for one. That's the experience you're having yeah. that you like, but it's also breaking down the enamel of the teeth. Oh, really? And, uh, well, you're putting acid in there. It's a type, it's a, it's a weak acid. It's not as bad as Coca-Cola. It creates tiny pores in the tooth, mineral, and the enamel starts to dissolve. You can fix that by brushing the teeth with a toothpaste that has some sort of uh, enamel rejuvenator in there. It could be a fluoride, although now if you say fluoride on the internet, then there's people that are saying it's in the water system. It's driving you nuts. Uh. Illuminati. So you can't say fluoride. But... I guess fluoride does make your teeth harder. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but you can, yeah, replacing calcium with fluoride. That's how fluoride tooth, toothpaste works. But if your teeth are bathed in acid for too long, more minerals will be dissolved than can possibly get put back in. And once the enamel's gone, it's gone for good. Right. It never comes back once those pores are opened up too much. So I don't know. If you're drinking this stuff or any water for that matter, Apparently, this is one of the reasons to look for a low pH. I realized this when I, when I had the pool going, and you got to nail the pH. What's the pH of the human body? The people's eyeballs are burning. You got to nail the pH. All of a sudden, I got the strips, and I'm testing, yeah. and I've got the machine. With your lab coat. And, and, and I have the pH plus and the pH minus, and I'm trying to find the human body in my pool. And that's kind of how it works here is that you're drinking this stuff, Will, and you got pH all over the place. Yeah. And sure you're dead. Do. <laughs> and you're dead for it. So anyway, they say pure water is the best. And just, just I guess, don't overdo it. The sugary drinks are still the worst. Yes. Because then you're getting the pH, the acid, and the sugar, and you're dead for sure on those ones. But this one, you're supposed to limit it a little bit. Reach for the regular water every so often brush the teeth, and so forth, and uh, continue to enjoy your sparkling beverages. So this is a recent study. Is it? Um, it was re- written. I mean, this is a recent, this story is recent. I don't know how recent the study yesterday. itself is. I, I read this, um, I read a, a similar article about the corrosive kind of as- acidic carbonated water, um, and they said that it was, it wasn't, it was fine. There was no, like, negative effects. Okay, so it disputed these findings. Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, I read it like a couple months ago. Maybe there's like yeah, new findings. I'm sure just like everything else, there's two sides to the story. But the fact of the matter is it does create the acid. It's yes, not like you're going to bump into true. sparkling water in nature when, when Willie Doo was evolving. Mm-hmm. You were getting still water, brother. Yeah. That's what you were living on. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but anyway. I'm not trying to spoil anything. I'm gonna keep stop it, stop it. I'm gonna drink. Th- I'm gonna drink the thing. But every swap time, I might reach for the pure, the the the, the still water, mm-hmm. the boring yeah. old still water. Every so often, I'll reach for. You're it. like, ugh, it's the worst. I'll do that noise, but then I'll you know I'll drink it. Yeah. I drink I I drink water fast. Is it because it's uh, 
there's no bite to it. <laughs> <laughs> you're just chugging it. No, I don't know what it is, man. I just, especially recently as I've gotten older, I'm drinking water fast. I'm probably deficient on some vitamin or mineral. Yeah. That's what they say when you're chewing ice or something like that. What are you, iron deficient? Anyway, what are we doing? You're not a doctor, neither am I. This ain't, that, that ain't this show, all right? We just let you know. We give you the tidbit. You dive a little deeper if you need to mm -hmm. because there's two sides to every story. Nothing's for free in the universe or the galaxy. You went bigger and then smaller. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy S10 Lite. There you go. That's something that's cheaper than before. Yeah. But it definitely is not free. They will want something for it. They will want a few of your dollars if you want one of those mm -hmm. in 2020. Guardians of the Galaxy. Thor. Shout out, Thor. Hemsworth. Australia. Get it done. Good luck.